All right, music fans, welcome back. Harmless Dave here talking real music in real time for some real people out there just like you, just like me. All right, so if you're a Bon Jovi fan right now, you're having a meltdown. Uh, this is some of the worst footage I've seen in quite some time, and that includes watching David Lee Roth in uh, Las Vegas a couple of years ago, which was just painful. But John Bon Jovi now has decided that he's going to use a vocal track. He did so on the song Living on a Prayer uh, in Houston back on the 26th, a couple of days ago. Now, this is music that is arena ready, right? You can't get much more arena rock than uh, Bon Jovi. And to pull this off at this point with John's voice in the condition it's in, uh, this isn't strange, uh, it isn't odd, but what it is, honestly, for a fan like me, is really depressing because people are getting older. And uh, we talked about Paul McCartney a few weeks ago. We talked about other people who, quite honestly, are struggling out there uh, and probably should retire. You know, Peter Cetera uh, famously said that, you know, I don't want to be one of those guys. I don't want to hear somebody and say, you know, man, that guy should just hang it up and have that guy be me, you know? So he made a wise judgment. He was singing stuff uh, a full, you know, step below where it was originally recorded. But Cetera's voice was still very strong um, into his 70s. Uh, John Bon Jovi is 60 years old. Whatever it is that burnt his voice out, I've heard a number of stories. And by the way, I'm not trying to just dump on this guy. I met him back in 1990. And back then, anyway, he seemed like a really decent guy, uh, as well as Richie Sambora, who is no longer with this band. Um, my secret mission would be to get Richie together with John, Johnny Gioelli and start some kind of a, you know, Sambora Gioelli tribute thing where they go out and they perform uh, Bon Jovi songs. And I think people would show up for that. Uh, and people are going to continue to show up for anything that's a, a brand. What's weird is if you watch the footage, the audience is going wild. They're going crazy. Um, you've got a mixture of casual fans and nostalgic fans who so want to go back to 1990. They're like, okay, enough of the 2020s, right? The roaring and soaring and sagging 20s. Um, I'd like to go back to uh, the early 90s where, you know, your heroes could wear big hair and crazy clothes and bright colors and, and you wouldn't you know, you wouldn't freak out about it. You wouldn't say it's cheesy. Uh, back in those days, all the vocalists were challenging one another. They're trying to outscale each other, whether it was Steve Perry, Jimmy Jameson, Lou Graham, you know, you go down the list of people, including John Bon Jovi, right? Uh, and to see him now, it, it's tough. It's just a fact of life and it's tough. And not too many people really do commentary like that they just say hey you know it's 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 okay you know it's okay there are people that said it's okay that he used a, a vocal track and i think in the state that he's in i hate to agree with that guy but i mean it's painful if he isn't going to use a vocal track but this is what all of this has become when these guys get older this isn't mellow music. This isn't music that's easy to sing. So you have to be able to continue to do it, or maybe you shouldn't do it. That's the argument. I'm not saying John's a bad guy. Um, keep in mind, though, people are paying a lot of money to go see these things. And you could maybe spend your money more wisely uh, going to see a younger band that again is able to grab the torch from these older bands. I call it Rock 1.0. They're, 
The problem is there's nobody promoting rock 2.0. There are bands out there, okay? And not the stupid active rock, mainstream rock stuff that you hear on certain so-called rock stations. I'm not talking about that stuff. Um, there's stuff, quite honestly, uh, all over the world, uh, more European stuff than American stuff that is or could be rock 2.0. There's a band called Perfect Plan from Sweden, which takes that whole melodic rock template and moves it forward. There are other bands um, that are in that same wheelhouse that nobody knows about. Every so often, I will showcase uh, a CD, and uh, nobody here in the States is interested in it. The five big corporations that run the music industry and run the radio industry, they're all on the same page. Yeah, let's just bleed rock 1.0 out and then we can get rid of it or we can relegate it to an oldies format in 10 or 20 years. I mean, they've got, I'm sure, a plan to phase all this out because the hip hop, the electronic music, uh, the auto-tuned uh, industry, as I like to call it, or I just called it, um, <laughs> that stuff is here to stay. People ask me all the time, so when's the next, when, when's the cavalry coming? I'm like, there's no cavalry coming. There's just not, there, nothing is coming. What, what is happening really is we're watching the dying embers of an amazing time in music. The fact that the Rolling Stones are still around by the way, Mick Jagger, for his age, sounds very good. There are certain people genetically who've managed to avoid falling into a place that is just so bad that even the diehard fans are critiquing it and they can't get around it. They're like, okay, I don't want to say this because I love this artist so much, right? I did a video about Paul McCartney. Paul McCartney has this incredible catalog but is he able to stand on stage and sing it the way he used to sing it? That's um, really interesting and will be open for uh, debate once his tour begins. Uh, he's charging quite a lot of money for tickets and you're paying a lot of money to go see somebody who may not be able to deliver the kind of experience that you expect. This is why you should support your local artists. You should go out and maybe discover some different music. Look, I get it. This is pure nostalgia. I miss it the way it was. That industry collapsed. We could have had at least 10, 15, maybe 20 years, maybe up until like 2010. All of that melodic stuff could have kept going. There are bands like Mr. Big, right? Uh, and Firehouse and all these bands that came out right there and then they were shut down, you know, and, and that's the industry that did that. And the industry is doing this. The industry is making it so people will pay large sums of money to go see somebody who can't deliver their own catalog. And that's why the journey tour this time around is very interesting because Arnell is really on his game and people are really just very happy, at least the ones that are being intellectually honest and not too biased by the guy whose uh, shoes are impossible to fill. That would be Steve Perry. All right. But if you can go see a band that kind of sounds like the band from 30 or 40 years ago, uh, you're pretty fortunate, you know, regardless of who the singer is at this point. I'm getting to that point where I don't really care who's singing. What I care is, do they sound like the music that's still being played over and over again on the radio? Or is it so bad that you can hardly recognize what they're doing in concert as opposed to you know the stuff they put on record? And I know that's unfair. It's like you freeze everything in time, right? It's like watching an old sitcom and then finding out what the actors look like now you know, you watch Friends or something and find out, oh, that's what Matthew Perry looks like now. Okay, you know, uh, you know, he's frozen in time. That's not really fair to him because he was uh, supposed to age and he's aging, you know, unless 
uh, Bill Gates or Klaus Schwab comes along and, or Elon Musk, and they can, they can reverse the aging, right? <laughs> That's coming probably something soon, folks. So if you're holding on for that, you know, hang in there, you know, eat your spinach and maybe you'll be around for a while. The point I'm trying to make about all of this is that it's, it's going away. There is no rock 2.0. The industry doesn't want it. Um, and I just, you know, disappointed in that. Obviously, as a fan of rock, uh, you have to go underground and you have to support those things independently, which means you probably should buy some music. You should either buy a download or buy a CD if they make one or even buy, uh, you know, some vinyl just to have it and say, look what I've got, almost like a souvenir. Say you don't even have a turntable. Who cares? Buy a vinyl, as, as they call them now. They're vinyls. Back in the old days, they were just albums or records. But people say, hey, I'm going out to buy some vinyls. I'm like, okay, enjoy your vinyl shopping. Um, but seriously, that, that's where we're at. And this whole Bon Jovi thing really is illustrative of the entire industry and where, uh, where it is. And people who sit there and they do interviews with certain people knowing that they have these problems and just don't talk about it, even just say, so, so how's your voice doing? You know, a um, couple of those concerts, it's tough. It's like trying to talk to one of your family members, right? About a problem. It's like, Hey, you know, you've been leaving that refrigerator door open a lot. And no, this is a lot worse than that though. This is, Hey, you were once a great vocalist and uh, you're kind of burnt out you know, and someone's got to intervene and say, this is tarnishing your legacy. It's better probably to step aside than to keep going. The weird thing is a lot of these fans don't care. They sing louder. The fans like at the Houston concert, they're singing louder. They're totally into it. I mean, I could show up and, and say, and grab a microphone and say, play the song right? Just play it, play it off the original album, play a live version of it recorded in like 1991 or something. I could, I could probably get away with that and run around the stage and start getting people to just sing really loud and be so into it that they don't even care if there's a band up there and the band can just pretend. And this is maybe where we're headed because people are so attached to the nostalgia. They don't want to let go of it. This was their music at a, at a really important time in their life, and they don't want to let it go. And they're forgiving. They're willing to just say, you know what? John's not what he used to be. Don't care. This music is too important to me. I want the experience. I want to see this band. Uh, I want to make visual contact with John Bon Jovi. That's very important to, to complete the experience. And I'm not really that concerned about how he sounds so long as um, they play this music and I can listen to it and sing along. I can still have a great experience. And hey, you know, you might have to have three or four beers to kind of forget about um, the glory days. That's just the way things are right now. It's too bad we didn't have an industry that back in the 90s and early 2000s didn't say, okay, there are still people, they're not all that old, who enjoy this kind of music. I think we should go back to promoting replacements, but they didn't do it. So we're all holding on to Rock 1.0 as it slowly burns out. Anyway, that's the way I see things. It's sad, it's true. Um, you know, again, better to just go back and watch a video from the New Jersey tour or something. There's got to be stuff uploaded where you can enjoy that band in its heyday. Also with Richie Sambora in it. Um, you can't, it's just tough to, to actually support them without Richie. And I know that all just happened and it was all supposedly Richie's fault according to what I've read. But um, again, as people get older, they should probably try to make amends and say, hey, I really need you in this band. Would you like to come back? 
you know, and we'll try to make this less about me and more about the band. But um, I think that ship has sailed for Bon Jovi. And uh, I would hope that maybe after this tour, that maybe John would just hang it up and work on charitable stuff, maybe record a song here or there. Uh, but it's, it's pretty rough, but who knows, they might have a, you know, a whole new production next time around where John doesn't have to sing at all. And with technology, the way it is, uh, you can fool a lot of people, especially if they consume enough $14 beer. Um, they won't even know. I mean, and you'll hear it from people. That was the greatest show. John's back. And you'll get the, um, honest commentators who say, yeah, he's, he's back because, He's um, singing to a vocal track from 1992. That's why he's back. So in any event, that's my video on the topic. I'm not trying to dump on John Bon Jovi. I'm just observing what I'm seeing. And it's, it's just a, um, it's a tough thing to watch. And uh, I would hope that somebody would intervene and say, you know what? I know we're selling tickets, but we're not giving the fans what they deserve. And uh, that to me is the real big issue here. All right, people, again, if you can subscribe to the channel, it'd be great. Patreon, uh, we're coming up toward the end of a month. And I tell you what happens at the end of a month. For some reason, people realize I'm giving money and I need to stop. So I need people to sign up for Patreon for just a dollar a month. I'm not telling you to give a hundred bucks a month. Uh, I take anything, a dollar, two bucks a month. You know, if you're, say, like... Um, friends with Elon Musk or something, and you want to contact Elon and say, hey, there's this cool channel. And I know you bought Twitter and everything, and that's kind of a big deal. But this guy needs financing. Maybe you can kick in, you know, like a billion or so every other year. That would be cool too. I don't think it's going to happen, but you just never know. I mean, Elon, he's, he's easy to convince, I guess, if you use logic and, you know, <laughs> a good argument. He will listen to you. So yeah, you can petition Elon or you can give a dollar a month. It's your choice. I think the dollar a month thing might be easier at this stage. All right, people, see you soon.